Hello, a viewer sent me this magic box full of bank for the purposes of fjorging. The box is fastened with Torx head screws and it must be taught a lesson. Yeah, you want some box? Yeah, get some! Who's the boss? I'm the boss! I have Torx winches somewhere, maybe I should just go find them. All right, no joke. The gentleman who sent me these mentioned that they would be covered in grease because he works in a grease factory. And yeah, they're pretty greasy. These are 35 millimeter bearings and I'm not sure what they came out of. The loose balls are half inch and some appear to be stuck or welded together. I read that kerosene is good at cleaning off grease. So let's give it a shot. The kerosene really didn't do that well. In this case, it just made a slimy, stinky mess. Everything is still slick, and this gelatinous stuff has really got to go. So I tried soaking it in acetone for a few hours, and that seemed to work much better. Now, I'm going to try to plug weld or canister weld these complete bearings into a blade soon, but that is for another video. This time out, let's focus on the balls. <laughs> all right, I've picked out all the ball bearings with this welding slag on them out. This is what I have left. It doesn't look like much, but it's enough to fill this canister. This canister is lined with uh, titanium dioxide powder mixed with water. It's sort of the quote-unquote active ingredient in liquid paper that keeps stuff from sticking to the sides of the canister. I'm going to put some steel foil along the sides as well, just as an added assurance that I won't have to be grinding off a canister. At any rate, I can put the bearings in there as they are now without any steel powder and try to forge them together. They're very big. They're going to have a lot of big gaps in there. I don't know that I'll be able to close those gaps. I probably won't. But who says I have to? You know, that might be sort of the appeal of a unique knife. You know, the back or the spine has some openings and gaps in it from the material that it's made from. And then along the edge of the knife, that's going to be the cutting edge, I can weld a solid piece of steel later. Or I can put the ball bearings in there, surround them with powdered steel, close up all those gaps and have sort of a more typical ball bearing canister Damascus blade. I don't know how interesting that's going to be. These are sort of big ball bearings and that might be, you know, it might be sort of dull. I'm going to be honest. I don't know how exciting that is. I'll probably go with the first option where we just have some gaps. You know, if I get lucky, uh, maybe I can close those gaps and there really won't be many gaps in there to speak of. If not, if it's clear things aren't going to close up, we'll just keep them open and that'll be part of the aesthetic. So let's do it. So to recap, we're going with balls only in the can uh -huh, and no steel powder. I was cleaning this up for forge welding and I don't know, this looks like a pretty clean area right in here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I mean, that is really tempting to take a run of making an edge out of that because it just looks so wholesome. The billet has been sawed in half. Let's take the good side and see what we can forge with these balls. <laughs>
It's time for rough grinding on the belt sander. We'll get our profile squared away and start grinding on the bevels. Here you see we've put a carbide file guide around the bolster area and it's going to be made flat all the way around where it will meet the handle material. It's going to help us get a nice flush fit between the metal and the wood without any gaps. As usual it's time to get this into some steel foil which will protect against scale formation while we thermal cycle the knife in the heat treat oven prior to the quench. The assumption is that the balls are 52100 steel, so we'll treat them as such. Normalization will be 10 minutes at 1650 degrees, followed by cooling, then 10 minutes at 1550, then cooling, then 30 minutes at 1470 degrees. After that, it's a quench from 1500 degrees into Parks 50 oil. I didn't show it to you, but there were two temper cycles, one at 360 degrees for an hour, then 370 degrees for another hour, 
The final hardness seems to be just over 60 HRC. It's not really necessary in a knife this size, but I'm gonna draw down the spine with a torch to make that area less brittle and to make the knife more springy. At least that's the theory. I've drilled a hole in the tang and I'm peening nickel silver into it. This gives me a large target for drilling the 1 16th inch handle pin through the handle material and the tang. I don't want a 1 16th inch drill bit breaking off during this process and this softer metal makes that less likely than if I were drilling through the original steel tang. The drill bit won't wander as much either and if I mess up the handle, I can punch out the circle and put a new one in for another handle instead of trying to match a hole in the new piece of wood to an already existing hole drilled in a steel tang. Mm, predictions, sound off below. What do you think is gonna happen? Here's what I think is gonna happen. because I stuck this in the acid for a couple seconds earlier today and not much showed up. It's a mono steel, I think that's to be expected. But I think if we leave it in there long enough, we'll see where the ball bearings meet, even though it'll probably be a thin little white line, not very distinct. Um, so, and the ball bearing is going to be mushed. I think it'll probably be about that big. So we'll probably only see maybe three or four lines here unless we come across the end of a ball bearing. There's a couple gaps in the top. I think if we ground down, we might get rid of them, but it's not worth exploring. They don't really affect the knife and it's just, it is what it is. So, all right, let's stick it in there and see what we get. Well, it's been polished with Ma's metal polish, and it is extremely uninteresting. <laughs> I mean, there's like nothing. The best part about it is where there's that little gap there, and there's a black spot with some white decarb. And this here is also decarb, and so, you know, I could get rid of this sort of glistening uh, white decarb by grinding it off and then sanding it again. But you know what? I'm not, I just don't want to. I'm not going to. So I got to figure out a way to bring some life to this thing. Hmm. Whoa, that was dull. If we apply this cold bluing solution unevenly, maybe we can get a nice worn looking patina. I'll settle for anything at this point. Man, I thought there was really going to be something even subtle as far as a pattern here after etching, but boy was I wrong. All right, one last one. It's always fun playing with balls. <laughs> the knife has a super keen edge, and as usual, I learned something. I'll see you guys around. Stay safe.